Welcome back. It is I, J. Del Negro, giving you more details about things that matter to me with a twist. And it's that I'm catching up with myself. And this week, we're going to talk about the second part, the continuation from the previous week's episode, music. What do I like? What don't I like? What do I like to listen to? What don't I like to listen to? What are my thoughts on some great albums, some great pieces of material? What do I think of what's going on right now? Well, I hope to answer some of my own questions, but you'd have to stick around here to listen and hear the entire episode. Hold tight and welcome to the next 40. I'm J. Del Negro, and I recognize that in order to get to where you need to get to, Sometimes you have to look back on your journey along the way. Welcome to the next 40. When we get into music, generally speaking, with the exception of Silk Sonic, it's been whatever it had been. I just listen to what I know. New music of any sort, it's, it's just different. It doesn't, it doesn't feel the same to me. There's always a song that I like, that's current, natural, whatever. But I'm not invested in learning about the artist, and I don't know if it's because I'm much older than a lot of what's pushed out, but I'm also not the kind of person that speaks music. I know a lot of people get life. They, they feel from a playlist or a song because it takes them back to a period or it gives them a feeling. Music doesn't really do that for me. I'm just feeling the groove or not. I might realistically like the way a song feels as, as it's playing, you know, happy or whatever kind of emotion can be conveyed through a song and I can, I can relate and connect with it in that way. But generally, like, if you play a song, cool or not cool, that, that's kind of it. I'm not breaking down the lyrics, really. It's, it's the feeling, the mood, the tone, the pacing, the instrumentation, the musicality, if that's a real word of it all. Like, I know, I know, I know. I'm a fed. I don't like television. I don't like music. What do I like? I don't know. Don't really know. I do know. I like music a little bit. Not a whole lot. Somewhat. Uh, best way to put it is... The spirit of music doesn't move me like it may move a lot of people. And that leaves me with the conundrum of I don't know what I enjoy, except I do kind of enjoy things. I'm going to list off a few albums that I actually like, that gave me feeling, that, that moved me for one reason or another, in no particular order. Now I'm reading these off a list, so here we go. Diary of a Mad Band from Jodeci. This one will be my ultimate favorite. I just like the way it starts off and then it just keeps me there with it. Top to bottom, this one would be my favorite album. Volume three, Life and Times of S. Doc Carter. This album was cinematic in what it was doing for your ears. They were attempting to make a full project that from start to end, gave you something with every song. And, and I was here for it. Urban Hang Sweet from Maxwell. So this was my playbook for how to get women into my mom's basement when I was younger. Um, I, now this came out in 96, so I wasn't old enough to have women in my mother's basement. But when I was old enough, this is what I used time and time again. So there is a moment Urban Hang Suite, if you were in my mama's basement, it was because of this, straight up. State of Mind by Raul Madon. Now this is one you're probably like, who? who's this guy? Well, he's a very talented musician and he has one song on the album, Waited All My Life, that is my wedding song. Do me a favor, I'm not married, but do me a favor, go out there, look for Waited All My Life from Raul Madon. Play that, you'll understand. The album top to bottom just sounds good and feels good. And this is heart and soul, integrity, 
someone who means, who has meaning behind what he's doing. And that's why I appreciate the music. Urban Flora. Now this was, someone put me onto this at a job and I could not let this album go. This album was everything I played 2015, 2016. My, my title was stuck on fantasy. I just, I just played this song all the time. Urban Flora was definitely a hit. And the thing is, I couldn't remember who the name of the group was, but I typed in Google. This is me typing, tick, tick, tack, tack. I typed in Google the album cover. I described the cover and I found the album and I was just like, yes, win. There's a, there's a win there for J. Don Negro. And an honorable mention, this is a that piff legendary download of the Lonnie Bro collection, which was un, all the unlicensed, unreleased music from Frank Ocean before he became Frank Ocean and had like 30 something, 40 something tracks on that. I just played it over and over and over and over again. Um, that really moved me. And that's generally what the issue is. Like music doesn't move me, so I don't connect with it. These albums that I gave off, I did connect with. And like they, I had a good time. There's a memory, there, there, there's a core memory generally associated with each and every one of these albums that I listed. Uh, Urban Hang Suite, again, my mama's basement. State of Mind gave me a feeling that I could, that, that resonated with me. Urban Floor, I actually just started a new job and someone there I didn't know wanted to share with me and that was kind of important. S. Dot Carter, thought I was grown, I wasn't, but this was still in the mama's basement era, but I felt good, felt good at that time to listen to these things. It, music now, with the exception of Silk Sonic, like I don't, I don't care. Like I hear a song, I like a song cool. I'm not invested in finding out anything else about the song or the artist. A lot of times I don't even know the name of the song and or the artist because it's so much of it. And oftentimes what's what's programmed via radio is often the same sound anyway. So it's not like it's not like what I'm heard that I like that I enjoyed. I wouldn't find again through somebody else because somebody else is going to make a song that's very similar to what we just heard. So whatever what whatever but like yeah music music just isn't the groove for, for the kid I'm, I'm sorry um i kind of i absolutely know what the groove is for me it's not necessarily music it's partially television of sorts um but then again it's not simply television of sorts it's just people the Exploration and discovery of people is what kind of moves me nowadays. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Some of Off the Walls music for Michael Jackson is some of the most brilliant music I've ever heard in my life. Because musically, it's it's in there. There's, there's a reason for these pieces. There's a reason for these parts. There's a reason for this sound and this dynamic. and crescendos and whatever else goes with crescendos. That, that's all there in that album. So this is the part of the show where I'm going to ask something of you and ask a couple of things. One, I want you to reach out, tell me what you think about music or your favorite music or recommend some music to me. Two, I actually like you to take some time out and subscribe. Um, if you feel so obliged, please subscribe. That's me trying to do a bar in real time, not a rapper. Music is not my thing. I just like listening to music. And third, hear me out. Off the Wall is a masterpiece of music. And I'll explain why. I just, I just want to gloat about Michael Jackson's Off the Wall for a moment. I'm going to list some of the songs. You may know them, you may not. The thing is, you're going to know mostly all of them. So let's start with Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. This is the video. He's dancing basically inside a disco ball. You know this song. Rock with you. The hand clap. The electric hand clap, which is really just a snare of the drum. But you know this song. Working day and night. You know what you got me doing? Working, 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 day and night. The title track, Off the Wall. 
It's not even as popular as the other songs, but you know this song. You know it. Think about it. Just everything I said so far, just run it through your head. If not, go out to YouTube or your DSPs and pull up, pull up these songs. Pull up off the wall and tell me you can't think and you don't feel that this is one of the greatest mixes of music ever put together. Get on the floor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're like, Jay, 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 Jay. You just said I'm going to know everything. You're going to know Get on the Floor. If not, do what I just said before. Go to YouTube. Look it up. You're going to hear it and be like, holy crap. I do know this. You just don't know about title. But you know this song. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Girlfriend is a song I believe. And I'm making this up in real time. I am making this up. Girlfriend is a song that I believe Chris Brown sang in seventh grade to explain why he was taking everybody's girlfriends. He just wanted to wrap it all up, put it in a pretty little package. Chris Brown singing Girlfriend in the seventh grade. Look for the video. It's out there. I made it up, but it is out there somewhere. She's out of my life. Stop for a minute. You're hearing it. Yep. You know this song. I can't help it. Again, you're like, Jay, you said I would know these songs and I don't feel like it. you do. In fact, you've heard it sampled many, many other times. Backstreet. Blackstreet did it for joy. Here we go again by Portrait. Baby by Fab. Addiction by Ryan Leslie. Run through all of those songs, then go back to I Can't Help It and you'll hear the beginning and the bass line. And by baseline, I mean the standardization for what these songs became. That album and Bad and Thriller. Beautiful pieces of work by the man, the myth, the legend, Michael Jackson. I love that album. That one touches me. It's a good time. It's disco, but it's a good time. I like, I like disco. You like disco? I like disco. We all like disco. We don't all like disco, but I really do like disco. And I just said that out loud. You all heard that. So, secret's out. Jay likes disco. Because you can release and let go with disco, for the most part. Like, it, it's some of the most non-uptight music there is that's out there. Like, I do believe there are a lot of drugs being used in order to come up with a lot of the disco tracks we know. But disco was a good time. And that album... Off the Wall was a fantastic time to listen to music. Hear music now comparatively, like I don't, I don't know if that's all in there. Because generally, what I hear is production in an attempt to make something instead of the outpouring of the people who made the record. If that makes sense, it's not an extension of them at that moment. It's an attempt to make something else. And that's definitely not to say that wasn't the case before, but I think artistry was a lot more persistent in the music industry than it is now. It feels a lot more like music now is an attempt to make a buck is fine. I definitely believe there's a difference between artistry and industry. And the industry prevails because that's the only way you hear about artistry. But I'm not seeking artistry anyway, so I am the consumer that has to be swayed. However, what I hear now does not sway me. So I make a pretty bold claim there and didn't catch myself on that one. I said, what did I say? I said, um, artistry is not persistent in music currently. And how would I know that? I don't. I don't. But my feeling is, and it's been my feeling for a lot of my adult years, that there's absolutely a difference between artistry and industry. And with industry, it's the only way we get to the artistry. By we, I just mean the general public. And that's because like the industry pushes out what the standard is for music or production or entertainment, period. So 
there are plenty of musicians out there that do it for the love, that do it for the passion, that do it to express who they are and deliver to the world an extension of themselves. But as a consumer who isn't necessarily looking for musicians, as a consumer who receives what's being delivered to him, I feel the industry influence more so than the artistry influence. I know with all the streaming services out there, you can go find whatever you want. I don't want anything. So I'm hoping that something is just presented before me and I like the package. And then from that package, maybe I'll find something that sounds like it or I'll touch more from that artist. But generally, like, that's it for me. Like, I just want nothing. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's just the truth like I don't, I don't want anything when it comes to music I don't I enjoy is not a word I don't dislike music I don't I don't need it that's the thing like I don't need it it's like my heartbeat like I know plenty of people who have to have some sort of connection to a rhythm and a sound and without it they're kind of lost that ain't me I'm, I'm not that way take it or leave it i'm taking it or leave it about a lot of things but music is definitely the most not the most it's pretty high on the take it and leave it chart like i just i'm gonna leave it there's plenty of people who can take it i respect the talent and ability and work ethic that a lot of people put into what they do as far as being a musician but me, myself, personally. It's cool if I don't come across it. Like, I know it's needed as a soundtrack to other mediums of entertainment. Like, Hamilton's nothing without music. Movies are nothing without music. This this show itself is nothing without the music underneath. I get it. I know it. I do it for a reason. But the pull that music has on people, it it just doesn't have on me. That's the short and sweet of it. I'm not pulled into the realm of wanting more music like a lot of people are. John Salvatore. John Salvatore said it best. I'm a fed. I'm a fed. I'm a fed that likes podcasts and YouTube streams. That's that's my entertainment thing. I like listening to podcasts in the car, watching YouTube when I'm at home. No television, no music, those things. That's who I am. That's what I do. That's what I learned from. That's the pull to me. Learning and hearing people experience and share things about their lives. Kind of sort of what this whole thing is. Me, reflecting on me, talking about me, sharing it with you. Thanks for listening. Come back real soon.